Right, you go on, scooch out me shot while I do the intro. Unless you want to intro with me. Do you want to intro with me? Wow. 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 What's happening, people? Welcome to the video. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. That's where you go if you want to build a website. And I will elaborate more on that later. But for now, we are going to do summer shred meal prep because it's summer. And we love doing meal prep videos because they might get millions of views. <laughs> All right, so for a meal to like legitimately classify as like geared towards fat loss, I think it's got to satisfy a few criteria. And those are low calorie, high protein, filling, nutritious. Uh, I think they're the main ones. And then if it's relatively easy to prepare, that's also a bonus. And one thing that you can't really compromise on is taste. So those are the things that I'm gonna try and nail today. Now. This isn't going to be particularly like on a budget. I have done meal prep on a budget videos before, but I'm on that big time YouTube dough now. I don't really want to fill up my fridge and freezer with like peasant meals. So I'm just going to make some good shit, mate. So I'm going to hop straight into GoPro cam so that we can do some POV cooking action. And the rest is history, man. Enjoy. All right, so first up, we're going to start with some turkey meatballs with roasted cauliflower and sweet potato with pomegranate and a tahini and yogurt dressing. So all these ingredients are listed in the video description for you. So first up, I'm just going to rinse these sweet potatoes because we're keeping the skin on those. There's just no need to waste valuable life peeling potatoes. So I'm then going to chop these up into fairly small cubes just so that they cook faster and if you own a kettle throw the kettle on I do happen to own a kettle so that's pleasant I'm gonna throw that on and then we are going to throw those into the pan whilst that boils right I'm gonna grab a steamer out and use that to start the cauliflower off but if you prefer to boil it then that is fine so first we need to get to work on these cauliflowers cauliflower I feel like cauliflower should be the plural for cauliflower anyway get rid of the leaves and then getting rid of the stem is optional but it'll take longer to cook than the florets so i'm gonna get rid of it that kettle's boiled so we'll get those sweet potatoes started and then finish up chopping up this cauliflower i'm gonna leave that in the steamers for now because it won't need as long as the sweet potato so next up for the meatballs i'm gonna be using seven percent fat turkey mince now i intended on using two or three percent fat but there wasn't any in stock in the supermarket and to be honest two percent turkey mince is dry af anyway so maybe we dodge the bullet there so i'm gonna throw that into a bowl i'm going to discard that meat nappy and then i'm going to grab some spices off the spice shelf i don't have breadcrumbs but i do have bread so i'm going to use that in the meatballs instead you can use breadcrumbs if you want but bread works fine so i'm going to chop that up into small pieces and i'm going to add it into the bowl with the meat followed by a generous amount of salt pepper oregano and paprika so next up we need some eggs to help bind things i actually could have gotten away with one and a half or maybe even one egg for this amount of meat but what's done is done it's water under the bridge all right so probably about time that that cauliflower went on so i'm going to slam those on top of there so they can start steaming and they're going to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan and turn that up quite high so i'm then going to prematurely start fisting this meat mixture before <laughs> sounds grim before realizing that i actually forgot the feta and i got my hand all slimy and grim for no reason so that was fairly difficult to get over but it came through it stronger so before you get involved add some feta anyway it's finally time to actually get involved so this just needs some gentle mixing until everything's incorporated and then we are going to start tearing off chunks rolling them into little balls and adding them to the pan disclaimer this is a genuinely hideous task but hopefully it's going to be worth it in the end. So you can give those meatballs a turn when they have uh, started to brown a bit on the bottom. All right, we're going to take this all off the heat. So let's drain the cauliflower in the colander and then the same for the sweet potato. I'm going to grab a big mixing bowl and I'm going to dump it all in there, followed by a few squirts of olive oil. Then I'm going to season slash spice this mixture. I'm just going with some cumin, turmeric, pepper and paprika again that's just what i had on the shelf and deemed most relevant but you know be adventurous if you like so the easiest way to do this is just to toss it all in the bowl a few times i'm going to do that before adding a little bit more paprika and then giving it another toss all right so it's all got to go into the oven now so you're going to need a fairly large baking tray especially for this veg and preferably preferably with a bit of depth so tip that out and then i'm going to cover the other tray with some foil just to reduce the elbow grease required later when doing the dish so then I'll just lay those meatballs out. I'm going to slam them both in the oven. 
The meatballs are going to need about 15 minutes, so we might as well tidy up a bit whilst we wait. And then, voila, meatballs are done, but we're going to get a bit of a crisp on the veg. So we're going to turn the oven up to pretty much as high as it'll go and give those another five minutes. Alternatively, you could grill it. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to make the dressing. So we just need some yogurt. I'm using fat-free Greek, some tahini, a lemon, and we will use the good olive oil for this part. So the tahini can separate in the jar a little bit, so you'll need to give it a mix around before you add it into the bowl. And then make sure you use your yogurt lid as some kind of yogurt shield to avoid, uh, you know, yogurt splattering before adding that into the bowl as well. Then I'm just going to go with a small glug of olive oil, that's the technical measurement, and a good squeeze of lemon juice. So mix that all around until it's mixed then give it a taste just to make sure that it's not disgusting mm, fuck. then i'm going to locate some kind of sauce receptacle into which i will house the sauce and then we're going to dump that in there and we can keep that in the fridge and only add it when we are about to eat because this isn't really something that you want to like heat up at any point now i might as well start plating this up so i'll obviously just uh, cut into the fattest meatball first to make sure that's cooked that that turns out that is cooked that would have been embarrassing and then i'm going to divide these as equally as possible between my five containers now obviously like if you add one you know one ounce ounce of brain cells wow that's that illustrates my point if you add an ounce of brain cells then uh, you might make a number of meatballs that is divisible by five but you know i didn't so you can learn from my errors now if you wanted to be precise with this you could actually weigh out all of your meatballs but i'm just going to work the macros and calories out based off the average you know with the total raw weight and the number of servings all right by now the veg should be done so i'm going to grab that out and since the gopro doesn't really do it justice i'm just going to get a shot on the proper camera so let's just witness this shit for a second all right finally i'll just divide that up again into roughly equal portions and then they're going to need leaving out to cool before you uh, put them into the fridge or freezer so we're going to leave them like this for now and then we're going to add the pomegranate and sauce as and when we actually eat them so just so you know what that actually looks like i will now demonstrate like so so a couple of minutes should be enough in the microwave and then just spoon on the sauce and the pomegranate and uh, just just witness the beauty right so i'm going to shut up now and uh, i'll speak to you again in a second for the next meal just to just to put emphasis on uh, how how good this is though this is actually like legit everyone should try it All right, next up, we're gonna make a chicken and veg stir fry. And if that sounds pretty simple, that's because it is. Again, ingredients list is in the description. So we're gonna start by banging a few chicken breasts in the oven. I'm not gonna season them just yet because they're straight out the freezer, so nothing's actually gonna to stick to them. Right, we're gonna sort all of our veg out before we start frying it because we're not gonna be frying for very long. So it all needs to be good to go when we need it. I'm gonna drain the sweet corn and peas first and place those in a bowl to one side and then it's time to get some chopping so i'm going to start with the carrot these need to be pretty thin but then again there's nothing wrong with a bit of crunch so don't really worry about uniformity uh, i decided i didn't really need the second carrot so fuck that off spare carrot going uh, if anyone wants it um, shove them to one side and uh, get cracking on the red onion so you can chop them finely or in chunks, really, again, it doesn't matter. Chop them in abstract shapes if you want. It's all the same, mate. All right, I'm going to shove those in a bowl to one side as well and then get going on the peppers. I really don't need to do much narration here. I'm literally chopping veg. I'm sure you know how to do that. So next up, I'm going to put a couple of chilies in. Uh, not that they're particularly hot, but just for flavor more than anything. And then finally, some fresh ginger. Key move. Now, I'm going to chop this pretty fine. But uh, if you don't want to, you could microplane it or even just get some of that, those tubes of ginger paste stuff that they sell. That's decent also. All right, and that's all, like, that's everything. That's about it. We're ready to go, mate. So the chicken breast should be a bit more moist now. So I'm just going to pull those out of the oven and uh, get to seasoning. So a bit of pepper, a bit of salt, some Chinese five spice, and then a bit of olive oil. I'm just going to flip these over and do the other side as well. And then I'm just going to roll them about a bit so that they are somewhat evenly covered. So shove them back in the oven and we'll start frying shit. I'm going to use sesame oil on account of it being tasty, but again, frying, whatever you like. The pan should be hot because we don't want everything overcooked and soggy really 
or it's just going to be even worse once it's been in and out of the freezer again. So onions first and then a little bit of light soy, not too much again. We don't want a soggy stir fry mate. I'll fuck about with those for a minute in the pan and then uh, I'm going to shove them to one side and add in the carrots. I'm just doing that so that the carrots actually get to see some heat on the bottom of the pan instead of just sitting on top of the onion. Again, the pan should be hot, so we'll just give that a minute and then repeat the process with the peppers. Give that another minute and then I'm going to add in the chilies and the ginger. I'm going to mix that around so that they can see the bottom of the pan again and then finally we will add our sweet corn and the peas and these don't even really need to cook to be honest we just want them in the mix so they can get involved in this flavor party so i'll add another drop of soy and then a decent bit of five spice but i said that like it's a question it wasn't a question it was a statement and then uh, I'm going to give it all a good mix around in the pan, maybe for like another minute. I'll then take that off the heat and uh, pretty much get on with plating it up immediately because I don't want it to keep cooking in the pan. So I'm going to get it out of that pan into these containers. So again, I'm just eyeballing this, but if you give a shit, then you can obviously weigh it all out and make it even. But, you know, I'm a fucking maverick, mate. I'm a guy on the edge. Who knows what I'm going to do next? All right, another unspecified number of minutes later, and I reckon... The chicken is done so pull it out check it's done that's a key move check it's done mate don't die uh, this is indeed done so that's good news so i'm going to slice that into slices and then divide it up between my containers i used four chicken breasts between five portions just because they're quite big breasts i'm pretty sure costco got the chickens on the test mate anyway there we have it five portions of chicken and stir fried veg ready to eat freeze or refrigerate refrigerate as you please i'm going to store them as they are and then add condiments at the time of consumption but i will uh, come to that shortly so stick with me for a sriracha money shot so like before when you're ready to eat slam it in the microwave until piping hot and then uh, select your weapons of choice i'm going with sriracha and hoisin so i'm going to take this nice healthy meal and then just bukkake it with msg which isn't necessary but i like the taste <laughs> <laughs> all right that's a uh, summer shred meal prep with joey d so you know like my video subscribe to my channel tag me in your instagram stories when you make this good shit everyone be me mate please see you later bye mm. bye say bye max shout it because you're All right, people, before we go, I'm just going to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, that being Squarespace. It is the place to go to satisfy all of your website needs, whether it's an online store, a blog, domain, or whatever else. Squarespace is the easy-to-use, all-in-one platform that makes making a sick site easy AF, mate. You just choose the template that you like the best, and then you get to work personalizing it with their style editor tool until you have a nice, shiny, unique website that looks like a pro made it. The templates are all responsive, so whichever device it's being viewed on, your site will automatically adapt the layout to look best on that screen. But aside from having control over how it looks, you also have control over what it does, whether it's the unlimited number of items you can list in your online store, or the ability to have customers schedule appointments directly through your website. You can do it all with Squarespace, so if that sounds ideal, you can head over to squarespace.com and start your free trial today. And then squarespace.com forward slash Joe Delaney to get 10% off your first purchase when you're ready to go ahead. All right, people, thanks a lot, and I will see you next time. They see me rolling, they hating. Joe Delaney is my hero. <laughs>